You know, the president does hold a news conference later today at Two the White questions. House. Yeah, one of them ought to be, I think it do you will. want Jeff Sessions out? We will hear the president answer that directly probably later today. Joining us now to discuss, Margaret Hoover, CNN political commentator, Republican consultant, John Avalon, CNN political analyst, the editor-in-chief of the Daily Beast, Mark Preston, CNN senior political analyst, and Asha Rangappa, CNN legal and national security analyst. Wow. You know, a lot going on. Margaret, let's start with you on this effort. We'll put Paul Manafort's subpoena aside for, for a, moment a moment because we just learned about that. But the president trying to force out Jeff Sessions, uh, you know, clearly Anthony Scaramucci said, yeah, that's probably what's happening right now. That's extraordinary, this public shaming of the man who was once his best political elected friend. I don't know why we continue to use the benchmark of precedent and what has been done in the past to measure this presidency. Donald Trump is a bit of a bully, right? He's always been a bit of a bully. So he is going to publicly shame people. He's done it all throughout the course of the campaign, frankly, throughout the course mm -hmm. of his real estate career. And this is what he's brought to the White House. I mean, this is just sort of, we continue to be shocked at, at the sort of some of the behavior and the sort of change in decorum emanating from the Oval Office. Mm -hmm. This is Trump being Trump. You may not like it. Right. I personally think it's beneath the office, but this is what's happening in the office now. But many And he very clearly wants him out. There's no question. I mean, he wants him out right. and he's beating around because he can't. So will he say it directly or not when he has definitely asked this today, as John points out? John Avalon, to you, the question is, is this moment different than after FBI Director uh, James Comey was fired in terms of how Republicans in Congress will actually act and what they would do if the president forces Sessions out? What do you think? Absolutely. I mean, it can't be said enough that, that Sessions was his first and for a long time only Senate endorsee. Mm -hmm. And for members of, of Republican members of Congress to witness him decide to publicly humiliate and attack him and belittle him repeatedly, even on the day of a major health care vote, the first thing on his Twitter account is calling his own attorney general weak after calling him beleaguered the previous day. It shows that very clearly that loyalty is a one way street with this president. And, and that, and, you know, and maybe he took the phrase bully pulpit a bit too literally, but there is, there can't expect no loyalty in return for service because this is just a, a, a vicious, uh, you know, hobby horse. I mean, at this point, he should just, you know, just let all the insults fly and, and, and start calling him a Keebler elf. He's really emasculated him in a terrible way for the institution as well as for the prospect of, of the Justice Department. Uh, and, and I don't know how many moves out he's thought this. Maybe he's thinking there'll be a recess appointment he'll make in August. Um, you know, because otherwise Rosenstein would become AG until the Senate confirms uh, a new attorney general. But expect very tough questioning because mm -hmm. the, the plan seems to be to appoint an AG who will then fire the special counsel. Uh, well, that's the game that? here. But the uh, Asha, let, let, let me put that question to you, Asha, because that, that's a big deal. Right. I mean, if you are the president who's already fired the FBI director because of the Russia investigation, mm -hmm. and that's what Donald Trump told us in an interview. That's what President Trump said to Lester Holt. He fired him because of Russia. You've already done that. And now you're forcing out or pushing out, maybe firing, we don't know yet, your attorney general because he wouldn't recuse himself from the Russia investigation. That presents some pretty thorny issues, I, I think, especially for members of Congress. Yes, and it also raises some pretty thorny legal issues, John, because he's, all, he's already raised the specter of obstruction in firing Comey and the reasons behind it. And at this point, he's basically given an interview to the New York Times where he admitted that he's angry that Sessions recused himself because he wanted an attorney general who would have helped put a stop to this Russia investigation. So if he fires Sessions, he's adding yet another nail to the coffin of charges of obstruction. So he's sort of stuck a little bit, and I think he's counting on Sessions uh, resigning. Now, even if he replaces Sessions, even if Sessions resigns and he was able to replace Sessions, it's still a long road to hoe to get to firing Mueller. Um, the special counsel regulations are pretty specific that the special counsel can only be fired for good cause or misconduct or a number of other uh, very specific factors which Mueller doesn't meet. Conflict of interest is one of those, and I think that's why you see them honing in on that. Um, but all of these things begin to, again, potentially pile on to his legal troubles because he keeps stating his intention that he wants this Russia investigation to go away. All right, and we're just getting a new tweet in from... Senator Lindsey Graham uh, as well. Let me just read that. I think we have that that we can put on the screen here. It's up there. President Trump's 
tweet today suggesting Attorney General Sessions pursue uh, prosecution of a former political rival is highly inappropriate. For prosecutorial decisions should be based on applying facts to law without hint of political motivation. To do otherwise is to run away from the long-standing American tradition separating the law from politics regardless of party. Mark Preston, that's from a Republican. Right. He's probably not alone. He's certainly not alone. 51 Republicans voted for Jeff Sessions to be the Attorney General, uh, and they're not going to look kindly on one of their own being treated the way that the president is now treating his attorney general. Jeff Sessions spent several terms in the United States Senate. And what's interesting about what Lindsey Graham said there is uh, not only did he say that, but in another tweet, he acknowledged that he has vigorously disagreed with Sessions, but he never doubted Sessions' integrity. And I think that is very key because even if you were not a fan of Jeff Sessions as a Republican in Congress, perhaps you didn't agree with him on immigration, perhaps you didn't agree with him on some of his conservative beliefs, there is a sense of loyalty uh, that still uh, will cling to Sessions from those United States senators. And in terms of a recess appointment, because it's something that I've been thinking about as well, is that that's going to be very difficult to do if the United States Senate stays in pro forma session, meaning every three days in, in the month of August, they don't go on recess. So Jeff Sessions, mm -hmm. uh, to what John was saying, would then have to turn to his assistant attorney general or deputy attorney general, who, by the way, he's been critical of as well. Right. And, and I should just note very quickly, this is not normal, this is not normal, and we shouldn't normalize, quite frankly, the way the president has been acting and has been acting for the past six months. And again, just to hammer home your point about what Republicans feel about this, Rush Limbaugh himself yes. yesterday on the yes. radio was saying this is a little bit discomforting, unseemly for Trump to go after such a loyal supporter in this way. Let me shift gears uh, to campaign chair Paul Manafort right now. We are learning just in the last few minutes that the Senate Judiciary Committee, after striking some sort of deal with Paul Manafort, yeah. has issued a subpoena for him to come testify uh, before that committee tomorrow. Now, it's hard for us to know exactly what's going on here. Is this for real information? Is this showmanship? You know, Asha, let me ask you, what are the implications? A subpoena has been issued. What if Paul Manafort doesn't show up? Well, then the committee can hold him in contempt and he can go think about not showing up while he sits in jail. Um, so that's, that's the ultimate penalty. Um, I think what could be happening here is that a lot of pressure has now been put on Manafort as a result of Jared Kushner's statement. Um, Jared, you know, if we take Jared Kushner's statement at face value, this was, you know, the, the Three Stooges meeting with the Russians. And we know that that's not true. And Paul Manafort, in particular, who has a lot of campaign experience, probably has much more information to give. And now I think the pressure is on him um, to give more details because Jared Kushner claimed that he can't recall. The other thing that might be going on here in his reluctance to appear um, or share the transcribed interviews is we don't know what's happening with him and Mueller. And if he does have a lot of information, he and his lawyers are going to want to leverage that with Mueller for as much as they can uh, in mm -hmm. order to, hmm. you know, reduce his his criminal liability. So he doesn't want to put all of those cards on the table before he's had a chance to milk it for all it's worth. Hmm. So I think there's a lot of different things that are going on here um, that that could be uh, creating this tug of war. All right, guys, uh, stick around. We have a lot more to talk about. We're trying to keep up with the flow of with events this morning. And it's awfully hard because there's so much going on.